Hi there, I'm Violet Van Hees and this is Grow Your Movement Freedom. Welcome. So today, with the help of Max, it looks like, and his cat house here, and with the help of a picture that I went all the way to Golden Gate Park in San Francisco to get for you, we're going to look at something really interesting about the nervous system. So the, the nervous system of mammals um, have a number of different states in which, you know, your nervous system will go into different states to respond to the environment. So probably the ones that you're pretty familiar with are, you know, if you've been, imagine you're a deer or a gazelle out in the, uh, you know, the savanna, and uh, you're grazing and it's all cool and all of a sudden a lion runs into the pack and starts to chase you. At that point, your nervous system will go into a completely different gear. It will go into an aroused state called fight or flight. This is your sympathetic nervous system. And this is your nervous system that's meant to be a short-term spike in all the things that help you run and get away and fight and take action and deal with stuff. To be really active and effective in your actions. And this is meant to be a temporary state. And at the end of the you're either chased, you know, you're being chased by the lion. Let's say you get away. Okay? So the lion leaves, the lion goes after someone else, it's all over. Then you go back down into that state of being ready to graze. And this is sometimes referred to as the uh, rest and digest state. And it's one branch of the parasympathetic nervous system that functions in that place. So that's the place where you can digest easily and you can, you know, your heart rate's down. Basically, you can metabolize stuff. You can uh, draw energy from your food. You can um, do things that help you restore and just function at a nice normal, uh, nice normal level. Okay, so a lot of people know about those two aspects. So that type of uh, fight and flight, and then coming back down into the sympathetic parasympathetic nervous system into rest and digest. However, there is another part of the parasympathetic nervous system. And it's uh, an older branch, an older part of the parasympathetic nervous system. And it generally will kick in when going into sympathetic nervous system didn't work, didn't do the job. And this is the place where you tend to go into a quiet state, but it's a freeze state. And it can be freeze or faint or shut down. Okay, those are three words often used to describe it. And it's a very old parasympathetic uh, part of your nervous system. So this is the part where if you've been the gazelle and you're caught by the lion, you're running and you didn't go fast enough, and the lion gets you, takes you down, that you basically faint. Your system shuts it down. It's as if you have died or collapsed at that point. And there are videos on the internet that show a, a deer, a gazelle of some sort, that's been taken down by a lion. The lion leaves. A coyote or a hyena comes in. A hyena gets worried about the lion, goes after the lion, and the deer jumps up and runs away. So at that point, they snap out of that really deep freeze, that place that they've gone into, the numb state, the um, shutdown state, go back into fight flight, run away, get back to the savannah. Okay? So that's sort of the spectrum of options within your nervous system. And that's where this picture comes in. This is a picture of a bridge inside the Japanese garden in the, um, the Golden Gate State Park in uh, San Francisco. And I thought it was such a cool bridge because it sort of gives a visual image of what might happen. So you might end up getting, you know, here you are grazing over on this side. Something happens and you spike and you go back up here. You end up up here. So this is where you're in fight or flight arousal. This is where your whole body is aroused, active, taking action. Then there's two branches of the parasympathetic nervous system. And your body might go to one or the other depending on what's going on and depending on your past experience and what you expect of the world as well. This is really important because your nervous system will do things not just based on current experience but on past experience. But generally, you might come back down to being on the savannah and grazing here, or you might end up down the other side of the bridge and on the other side over here. And this feels and is very different inside your nervous system. So over on this side, 
This is where your body shuts down. Instead of going in to rest and digest and doing all these things, it basically shuts down everything. It's in pure survival mode. Uh, and you'll see this in animals. If a, if a horse is trapped, if they're being asked to do something that's too scary for them. Some horses, when they're being asked to get on a trailer, it's too scary. They've, they've done what they can to not do it, and then they faint. And that's having gone off this side. Their body has just shut down over there. You can also get a less intensive um, indication of this in people and in horses. And it's kind of a shut down feeling. It's like the person or the horse animals kind of numb to the world. They're not responding. They don't respond well. They don't respond in sort of normal, um, socially engaged kinds of ways. Right? So you get the glazed over eyes. You get kind of the marginal responsiveness. They're just going through the motions. And you can also get this in someone who's been through situations in which the world around them was too hard to deal with and they weren't actually able to take action. So it can be in war zones where they're surrounded by war and just that calamity of war all the time and their system just doesn't know what to do with it anymore and it kind of shuts down to go into survival mode. You can also have it with people who have been in abusive situations. You can have it in situations where people have just been frightened, really scared, and they've ended up over here. Now, the thing is, your body, you, and the world may not know that you've ended up over there instead of over here. Because most people don't know about this place over here. But it's important to know that this is over here and that this is different than this. Because if you're over here, you can take steps to get back over here and to actually be in a restorative, calm, um, healthy place in your parasympathetic nervous system as compared to this kind of stressed, deadened, kind of weird place over here. So just looking at the cat house here too, right? This is another little image of it. So like you've got the top. You got one side, you've got the other side. You could be on the one side, you could end up on the top. And then you could end up down one side or the other side, depending on what your situation is like. And if somebody or an animal is over on this side, on the side that's shut down, on the part where you're basically in survival mode and all other functions are really numbed out, uh, sort of blocked, glazed over, right? You can help a person like that or an animal like that to come back, um, to come back into this place over here. And sometimes that can be a sort of a fairly straightforward transition from this place to that place where you kind of get a going from the glazed eye, kind of protective dulled out eye into a sense where the eye now becomes warmer, softer, breathing changes and the person can check out if it's okay or the animal, right? So, and it's really allowing the time for the nervous system to check. Is this new thing that's being offered, the step back into the other place, does it feel safe? Does it feel reasonable? And does it feel useful for them in this moment, in this place for them? So this has nothing to do with the rational mind. This has to do with the experience of their nervous system. Allowing them some time, allowing them the space to feel whether the shift back is a small enough increment that it's something where they can see if it's okay and they can sense whether it's safe, reasonable, and useful because if something is safe, reasonable, and useful, then the nervous system starts to think, well, I could consider that as an option. I could probably do that. I'll check it out. Right? And then you can have that transition back and forth. Now, just a little bit of forewarning here. It's not always a smooth transition back. There's also the possibility that they're going to go back over this bridge, come the other way back over. Right? So particularly with a horse, for example, if you've had a horse who's been really shut down, horse who's been uh, in pain, sort of just stuck it out, you know, and then you start to do body work with this horse. Or a horse, you know, that's been a trail riding horse, and now you're going to offer it a chance to express itself, to have some experience, to have a voice in what's going on, and you offer them a chance to express themselves. Some horses will do a nice soft transition here. Others will go back over this bridge and get to the top and get into fight flight, big action, big expression mode. So you might get stuff where you get a whole lot of expressing going on. Just to let you know that that might happen, right? And that's a normal pathway, one of the normal pathways back to becoming regulated 
uh, into the, and able to rest and digest and actually have normal, calm, parasympathetic nervous system stuff going on instead of the stuff over here. So you might get these weird reactions that seem really big and you have no idea why they're happening. Somebody who hasn't said something for a long time. Hmm. Stiff upper lip and suddenly their lip loosens off, right? They'll start telling you everything they think. Some of it might totally surprise you, right? This kind of thing going on. This can be a normal pathway back to, to this side of the bridge. There is no set way that this happens. Alrighty, so that's just a little introduction to this other part of the nervous system. Because so, it helps explain a lot if you know that there's this other thing that can happen that kind of looks calm but isn't really. Or you're getting a person or an animal who's just not responding, right? And you're kind of going, what's wrong? What's wrong with this? You know, they're calm, they're fine, but you know, like it's, what's the problem? Right? And the problem could be that they're over on that side of the bridge. They're not on the grazing side of the bridge. They're over on this side of the bridge. And you can work with them and approach them and say hello to them differently. Once you know that that's what's going on, you can see them in a different way and you can work with them in a different way. So I wanted to offer that today because I think it's so useful and it's so uh, helpful in terms of being able to engage well in the world and with those around you. Thanks very much. I'd love to know what you think about this uh, and uh, know if you've had any experiences with this kind of thing. And if you'd like to get in touch with me, my website is right below here and my contact information's there. I'd love to hear from you. So let me know what you find out. Have fun sort of checking this out, thinking about it, exploring a bit, and we'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.